Winston. Hi. Today, Winston and I are going to be making spaghetti squash. We're going to be making spaghetti squash and some other side dishes. To start off, we're going to poke some holes in it and microwave it for about three to four minutes because the shell is really hard. So it's going to take a lot to cut into it. So here we go. <laughs> you know, when you've had a long week and you just gotta get some anger out. So after the squash is done microwaving for three to four minutes, you're gonna take it out and attempt to cut it in half. Now, you would think that cutting a squash in half would be pretty simple, especially after it's been in the microwave for a while. But as you can see, the struggle is real. The outer shell is really hard, and so we found out that it is best to use a serrated knife because that way you can kind of like saw through the skin. And so after sawing through the shell, the best way to do it is kind of just hope that you can pop it open. Okay. And after you've used all of your strength to cut the squash in half, you're going to use a spoon to scoop out all the pulp and the seeds and just toss that. Or you can actually take the seeds and toast them in the oven and they'll be like pumpkin seeds. Next, you're going to take either vegetable oil or I use coconut oil because I don't have any vegetable oil right now. But just any type of oil, you spread it over the meat of the squash. And this just helps the spaghetti texture to form and it have the moisture that it needs to fully cook. So I decided to also use a silicone mat, which I felt like really helped. And instead of using foil, this just helps it to cook and for the natural oils of the squash to be preserved. So you place them face down and then I also made two sweet potatoes that we are going to use for our dessert. So you pop this into an oven that's preheated to 400 degrees and you let it bake for 30 to 40 minutes. So I also decided to make a vegetable medley just to be a little side dish. And the first thing I did was chop up some mushrooms so that you always have to use an abundance of mushrooms because you think it's a lot and then all of the moisture is cooked out of it so they shrivel up and you don't have as many as you started with. And I just added these to a skillet and instead of adding oil I added just a tiny bit of water. So next I just took a broccoli head and got some broccoli out, added that to the pot. Also some onion to add a little bit of flavor and I just chopped that up and added it to the pot as well. I also took a corn cob and used a serrated knife to get the kernels off of the sides and added that to the pot as well. Next, I added some spices. I used coriander and parsley, and then just a little bit of cayenne pepper to add some spice, and some garlic powder. <coughs> so then you just strain out the excess water and put these in a bowl on the side until our squash and potatoes are ready. All right, so I left the squash and sweet potatoes in the oven for a total of 40 minutes, and this seemed to be a good amount of time. I actually had to add the sweet potatoes back to the oven because they weren't done yet, but how you know the squash is done is when you scrape against it with a fork and you get the spaghetti string texture. So next, I'm just putting the squash into a large bowl. You want to scrape with the direction that the strands go and I actually thought that it would be vertical but it was horizontal to the way that the squash was. For serving size, most suggest that it's half a squash per person. Our squash was a little on the larger side I guess. I was able to have 
plenty for the two of us with just half of a squash. There was so much content and meat in this squash and it's really easy to just scrape out. And then I just added the vegetables on the side next to our squash and put some heated up marinara sauce on the top of it. It goes great with most everything that spaghetti does. It's an alternate to have like a low carb pasta and it doesn't taste exactly like how wheat does. I find it actually more flavorful than regular noodles. There's so much that you can do with it and mix with it. You could put it on top of a salad as well. For our dessert, we just did sweet potatoes. After mashing them, I just added some sugar and cinnamon. Usually I like to put brown sugar on top of my sweet potatoes, but I had just used all that up in my oatmeal that morning. Cinnamon sugar is just as sweet and just as tasty. Thanks for watching. Just remember to stay reckless. Like this video if you like what you saw and leave a comment below if you decided to make this meal yourself, how hard it was to open the squash and what you thought of the amazing taste. And I will see you guys in the next video.